Hi, I was a twelve years old, primary six, from Yuling Primary School. We're still at methods of limit calculations. In this methods of limit calculations, we will need to revise the methods that we have learned before, and at the same time, we will also need to learn new methods. So, for this beginning. I'll just revise with you what kinds of methods have we used in the last lesson. The last lesson, we used an example to show us how we can use different things. And that example, 1 minus half plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4, then plus so on. For this example, what we use in this first step is because we cannot show we solve it. So we change it into sigma notation. But sigma notation, you can say is one of those general forms. And that sigma notation it became. So sigma. You can say I because that this one is actually you can change it into one over one if you like it. But this is from 1 to, because this goes on and on, so it goes until infinity. Then we have negative, we have positive. So with this negative and positive, we'll have a negative one. And what is this power? Because it keeps on changing, so it's definitely changing with this i. But how? First term, i is a 1, but this is a positive, so it is i plus 1. Then over, this part below is just a 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So it's the i. This is just the first step. Now, the second step, you realize we have this i over here that when we try to solve, we don't like it. So, we thought of a method. We form a function. So that second step, but forming this function, removing this i, what's next? But removing this i, how can we remove it? Well, you have to think of the methods that we have learned before, or think of what? have we learned before, that will cause an extra i. Well, for that, you are thinking of differentiation. Differentiation, for example, x to the power of i. Now, when you have an x to the power of i, differentiate, the i is taken down. So just form that kind of function. But be careful. When you differentiate, you have to think of the inverse operation of differentiation, integration. So that means you need differentiation and integration, but sometimes it is the other way around. Now, what's the next step that we have used? For that, because after differentiation, you realize it is sigma, then this negative 1 to the power of i plus 1 is still there, then you have x to the power of i minus 1. So then we use the sum in this GP or geometric progression. So we used that method. So with all those methods, we could actually solve this, but how can we apply it in other examples? For this part, we have to be careful whether to use differentiation first or whether to use integration first. So we'll have these examples to show us how we can use these. So for this example right now, we can ignore it first, okay? Okay. Let's take a look at the example that we have over here in this time. So it says 1 over 3 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 15 
plus 1 over 24 plus so on. But when you just first look at this, you realize this, how can I write it into sigma? Because first step, you have to think of writing it into sigma notation. Because after you write it into sigma notation, then you can use those methods that I've gone through with you just now. Now think. Can you think of that method? Okay, so let me tell you what it is. This 3, you can change it into 1 times 3. But I write it as 1 times 3. It's just to let you notice what kind of pattern is going on here. So 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over now 8. You can change it into 2 times 4. It's just like using its factors times together. But you have to notice a pattern here. There, 15. I can change it into 3 times 5. Then 24. I can change it into 4 times 6. And etc. But what's so special about this pattern? Okay, so we're going to use many methods for this. Now, first of all, let's look at this. Now, what would you think of? So, of course, sometimes in Math Olympiad, you will learn about this. We call this method partial fractions. So we're starting with method one. It's called partial fractions. So at this part, let me just write this down. So this partial fractions, how can you use this? Well, when you take a look, same difference in these two factors here. So when you try to separate them, you'll have an extra half outside, right? Then inside here, it's 1. So separate to 1 minus 1 third. Then here it is plus half minus 1 over 4. Then here, actually same thing, plus 1 third. Minus, or you can say that this is one fifth. Then plus one fourth minus one sixth. The next is plus. Now, until well. So we can let something be this, right? So to find, to use that, we can change this into a sigma notation. So, for example, we use I. Then, inside here, 1, 2, 3. Okay, definitely an I here. Then, add 2, add 2. So, it's like this. So, now, here, we use an I. So, maybe we could let this be all the way what if we let this be all the way until that i? So at this part, now it becomes like this. But what's next? Okay, take a look. This minus one third, right? Then plus one third. Okay, then, in, wait a second, because you have this I here, so you have a limit. So let me just change this. Now uh, this needs to go to infinity. Okay, like this. Does it look much more like it? Okay. So here is a minus one third, right? 
then here is plus one third. So they cancel out. Then minus one quarter, plus one quarter. So they also cancel out. Then minus one fifth and the next, they cancel out. But we have to take note of what terms are left. So, firstly here, one is left there, then half. But what's at the back here? So if you notice this pattern, it actually one over i, it would be cancelled. So you don't need to care about this one over i. So I have to minus one over i plus one. Then minus one over i plus two. Now why can you actually come from here? So if you start this in one over infinity, you can just write that zero. Then another one over infinity, zero. So inside here is three over two, right? 3 over 2 times half, 3 over 4. So 3 over 4 should be, should be your final answer for all of these methods. But the problem is, how many types of methods can we use? Okay, I can show you how many types of methods there is. Do you want to know? Okay, so from this part, this sigma, you could actually already have a few methods from here. Then after that, there are different forms that you can change. For example, for example, this form, you can also change it into this form, and then you have a few more methods. Then I change into this form, then you have another, then you have more methods. And then this form, you have more methods. So you can write it into a lot, a lot of these forms. It's like infinity of these forms. So I'm telling you that you can actually have infinity of these methods, but whether is this method good or is it very complicated, it depends on what type of form you change it to. So for this form, I'll be using this form first. Okay? Then for the next few lessons, maybe one some of these forms. Okay, so this is method one. Look at it. Okay, then I'm on to the next method. For these methods that we are using, you have to relate them to what types of methods we have used before. So, this is now method 2. Now, when you look at this form, think of what kinds of methods can we use. So, when you look at this, can we try to write out a function? What if we try to write out a function? Okay, so when you write out a function, let, so usually in functions, we use fx. Okay, and then for this, fx. So at this part, these denominators, we want to try to remove them so that it will be easier for us. Okay, so what if we try to remove this i? So this sigma is still the same. This denominator, okay, okay, let it still be the same first. Then, to remove
remove this I. I've told you at the beginning, we could use differentiation. So then you will get x to the power of i. For this x to the power of i, because we have two of these denominators, so partial fractions, and then from one sigma, with these two together, we can split it into two of these sigmas. Like this. So the first term is all right, i and i, they actually match. But the second term, to remove this denominator, you need i plus 2. But where to get that i plus 2? Now let me show you how to get that i plus 2. So at first, it is i, right? So times x squared becomes plus 2. But because you times an x squared, so you have to divide an x squared. Then over. Wait, let me just write this trait. So you have to over. Now still the same. i plus 2. Like this. Now with these two both matching, we can start to use differentiation. But at last, in order to get back this form, we can just sub i as 1. Okay, so this is actually a special form of this sigma notation. And this is actually the general form for this sigma notation. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So half sigma. But this at last, in order to get back the original, we know that it is 2x. But this starting, well, we're just, it's a 0. Okay, so let's differentiate this part. For this part differentiation, sigma. Let it still be the same first. And then this part, x to the power of i, i take down, simplify, becomes x to the power of i minus 1, then dx. This part in the back, minus 1 over 2x squared, then integrate. So still 0 to x, then sigma, still the same. Then this part differentiate. So it becomes x to the power of i plus 1 dx. Then for this part, when you look at this sigma, now what do you think of? Well, it is actually a geometric progression. Now, you can test it. When it's up in a 1, it becomes 1. Then after that, 2, it becomes x. Then it's just like that going on. Then x squared, then just going on like that. So it's the geometric progression. But be careful. This is all the way until infinity. So it goes on and on and on, non-stop. So you have to be careful of which geometric pro uh, sum for geometric progression you should use. So for the sum of geometric progression, if, let's say at first, it is fixed numbers. So it's a first number times 1 minus this ratio 
to the power of this is the number of numbers, right? Then you have to over. Now below here is one minus. It's ratio, but ratio you use second term over the first term. So in this case, this. Now what is it? It's actually an x, but this x right now will have to make a condition for this. So for modulus x, we can let it be smaller than 1, but it can approach to 1. Okay, so now you have x, here the ratio, smaller than 1. And here you have infinity terms. So s, infinity, now this, n, infinity. So you have a. But down here, it is something smaller than 1, to the power of infinity. So basically it approach to zero. And then you can just write the answer zero. So it's just a times one. That is a. So you have to over one minus r. So you get it like this. Now uh, let's sub that inside. Half integrate zero to x. X to the power. First thing is a 1. So first term is 1. So over 1 minus x. And here's a dx. Then minus 1 over 2x squared. Then for this part at the back, it's using the same thing. But except you have to be aware of the first term. Integrate 0 to x. First term, suck this in, is an x squared. Now x squared over 1 minus, this is an x, I mean, because this ratio is still x. Okay, so this part, I think I can erase it already. Now for this, be careful. These two, you cannot simplify that because this x squared, it has to go for integration. But this outside, it doesn't have to. So beware, you should not simplify that. Let's look at this first term. 1 minus x. Now that is very simple. You just recall. Now what kind of method do you use for this? Then you realize this is actually the basic integration formula. So here, negative, then outside is another negative. Then plus 1. Well, plus 1 inside this is all fine. So we can write long 1 minus x. Then sub 0 and x. Now this part, things are a little bit different at that place because of this x squared. Think of what you can use with this x square. And the denominator is actually a bit of clue for you. Okay, so let me just tell you what would we need to use. a square minus b square. Now a square minus b square, how do you use that? So you can plus 1 minus 1 here. So when x squared plus 1 minus 1, we can actually just write it as minus 1 plus 1. Now what's so special about this minus 1 plus 1? Well, I'll make a bit of change and then you'll see it. So x squared minus 1, I can change it into 1 so this is x minus 1 times x plus 1. Then I'll write out what would happen. So this part, put x inside, well, still the same. Then 0 inside, it becomes long 1, and long 1 is a 0. So this part at the back is a 0.
Now this front part, be careful. This is a one minus x, but this is an x squared minus one. So you have an extra negative here. So at this part, negative, you can write it as x plus 1. Then behind here is a plus 1 over 1 minus x, dx. Like this, is it right so far? Because here you use, well, well, you can call that a little bit of partial fractions. And then you simplify it for the first fraction, then the second fraction, break it off. First term, stay the same. Then this second term, x. x. Or maybe for this, you can see clearly that you can straight away integrate it, right? So let's just straight away integrate. So plus, now this x will become a, well, we can write this together, half x squared, then plus 1 becomes x. Then you have to sub in 0 and x. This part at the back, it is also pretty obvious. So negative, but then another negative comes positive, then after that 1 over 2x squared, then you have limit, I mean long, 1 minus x, then also 0 and x. So here you have to, okay, first part is still the same. Then the second part, x put inside, still the same. So this times it in at the same time. This times it becomes one quarter. Then the part at the back is plus one over two x. But zero, beware of this. It is only for this part, not here. Because this, it has never gone for the integration. So it's only inside here. So zero is still a zero, then zero times this is still a zero. Then this part at the back, x times inside. It becomes like this. Then zero, sub inside, log one, zero. So this is still a zero. And for this fx, you can see that it just gets to here. But because we want to get it back to our example, which here is actually x sub 1. So we have to write out, what if this x you sub in 1? So for this part, okay, let me just write it here. So f, the x sub in 1, so f1. Then now what happens here? When it is 1. So at that part, something here, long 0, infinity, you can't calculate it. Here, long 0, also an infinity. So let's just write these two constants first. So it's a 1 quarter plus a half. 3 quarters. Or you just write, you just say 3 over 4. Then plus. So there, what do you have? Now you can find out log 1 minus x. Log 1 minus x, it is common. So you might want to factorize that. But of course you have that limit. Then you have x approaches to 1. Okay, then what else is common? Half.
Okay, so um, I can write this whole thing here. Okay, so that you can see it better. Okay, then what's left inside? Now you have 1 over 2x squared, but nope, the 2 is taken out, then minus 1. Three over four stays the same. This half. You can common denominator this part. So it becomes one minus x squared. Then x squared because that this is actually times, or you can say that it's a factor. So you can just straight away start this x squared for a one. Then 1 minus x squared. You'll think of a squared minus b squared. So factorize that. Then still 3 over 4. Then what do you think happens inside here? 1 over, I mean 1 plus x, sub 1. Here, don't have. So it just becomes this part. This is infinity. This is a zero. What do you think of? One infinity and one zero. You most likely want to use this as a denominator. But it's just that it becomes denominator of the denominator. And now this form is infinity over infinity. So now this becomes 3 over 4, then plus limit. x approaches to 1. L'Hopital's rule, because x continuous, infinity well, infinity over infinity, indeterminable form. So it also gives you a clue that you can use that. Now, this part. Beware of this negative x. You have an extra negative. So 1 over 1 minus x. Is it right? Then, at this denominator, chain rule. Just think that this is, for example, a u. Then this is inverse u, so negative. But then here's another negative, so it's still positive. And down here, but you have a square of this 1 minus x. So it becomes like this. And now what happens? So 3 over 4. Now this becomes a minus because the numerator we have a minus. So limit x approaches to 1. Simplify, then reciprocal. 1 minus x. Then 1, you sub it inside, it becomes 0. So the answer is actually still 3 over 4. So these two methods, they're all the same. So with this, let me just write down. So 1 third plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 24 plus etc. is 3 over 4. But... For the next few lessons, we'll be using more methods, but they all have to be 3 over 4. 
If not, there might be a, a mistake somewhere. Okay, so for this time, we'll just use these two methods. So, I hope that you all can understand this. Be careful of what kinds of methods you are using and what kinds of conditions you have. So we'll see you in the next lesson. So if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And thank you for your watching.